how to make virtual reality 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 by 3D printing Minecraft. Hey guys, it's Chad. I've recently got a 3D printer from Monoprice. I actually had a uh, previous 3D printer from Monoprice, but they sent over a new one, the Delta printer, and I have been having so much fun with it. It has rekindled a love for 3D printing, and I thought, there has to be a way to 3D print things in Minecraft. So as I went through that journey, I will impart the information onto you on how to 3D print something in Minecraft. Now there are services that you can use, and this one's a little bit more tailored to how to print it at home. So here we are inside of a little Minecraft world, and this is what I have built to be 3D printed. And I do suggest that you create your own build to be 3D printed, that you don't just 100% rely on something you have built before, uh, because there's a few things that you may need to make sure that you really do need to make sure are done to something that gets 3D built. And first off, you'll notice that it is fully built out of cobblestone, that there really isn't any other colors. Uh, if you're going to be 3D printing something yourself at home, if you happen to know someone who has a 3D printer, or if you happen to have a 3D printer, it's most likely going to be a single color. And so I found that it was helpful for me to build in a single color so that I could understand that I needed to work with depth and things like that instead of working with color and different types of blocks. Now, you can get your 3D prints made somewhere else and made in full color. Uh, just bear in mind your build uh, when you're making this that uh, it may be in, th in, th in full color or it may be in a single color. Next is, this is fully solid. It's 100% the same block all the way through. There's no air gaps or anything like that. If you have air gaps in, inside, the program will actually keep those air gaps and it is a little bit hard to print uh, open spaces. Another thing is beware of your overhangs. This is about all that I could do. I couldn't do two or three block overhangs because when the 3D print actually prints, a nozzle comes up and places a layer down and moves up as it places more layers down. And there is no support here as it goes out to put out a, another layer. So it would actually be smarter for me to not have any overhang at all, but I found that with my printer, I'm able to get a little bit of an overhang, uh, and it, it messes up a little itty bitty amount, um, but I can pull it off basically. So this is what I want to print. How do we actually print it? Well, once you're done with uh, what you want your creation to be, make sure you save and quit. And then go get Mineways. Mineways is really the only program that I've found that is simple and easy to use to bring in your projects. Go file, open world. This is called Observer Golems. So we're going to go ahead and choose that. And at the moment, you don't see anything. And that is because where I am in the world is actually not at spawn. I put myself at zero, 00 for all my builds and you can easily get to your player by doing view and jump to player or hitting F3. And so where I was standing, it will be, uh, I was standing right around here. This will show where I was and you can see my whole world right here. This is the world that I use for a lot of the creative stuff for OMG Craft, and I could select anything that I want. But this area is the house that I was building. It gives you a small example of what it looks like. And all you do is hold down right click and then select the area that you want. Now I'm going to select a little bit of an area uh, in front of and to the side. Now, this little information that it's popping up is saying you've selected an area. So this max height and lowest depth area that is kind of outside of the bounds. It, noted, it has scanned the world and it knows that some of the blocks are either lower than where I have it set. And it's asking, do you want us to set this to what we think is correct? And I'm gonna choose yes here. So you can see that it moved down to 55. It gives you kind of a nice example of what you'll be selecting. If you drag this, you can see it's kind of going through the roof. It's getting the chimney first and then going through the roof and then going all the way down. 
and finally it has selected the ground and I do want that ground layer I think it'd be fun to pick it up pick up pick this up by the ground and have like a uh, at least a block of ground in there uh, and then you could do the same thing with layer height if you wanted to it'll bring it down and it'll show that it is not selecting any of those things right there either way this is exactly perfect for me and so once I'm finished, I'm going to do file export for 3D printing. Now, this works for rendering and Sketchfab and schematics and things like that. I know that with my 3D prints, I do not need a WRL. I need a STL file. So we're just going to do that. And we're going to call this. And you can see that I've done a few other houses and things like that. So we're going to call this OMG craft and hit enter it gives us a whole bunch of options. There are some options to fill air bubbles, which I do have selected. I found on a different build of mine, the air was either too large or too small, so it didn't fill that in. So it's good to fill it in yourself if you're gonna be building this for 3D printing. Tons and tons of different uh, things. You can make this a specific size if you wanted, make the blocks a specific size, that sort of stuff. So we're gonna choose okay. And it hopefully will give you sort of this idea of approximate cost for printing if uh, you use a different printer and kind of the size and all these things. Uh, and perfect. Uh, so, yeah, let's keep that. And now we need to do what is called slicing. So we're going to open up a program called Cura. And this is Cura. Now, uh, I'm not going to cover the settings of Cura. This is so specific for every different printer. I happen to be using the Monoprice Mini Delta printer. Uh, this is very specific for every single printer. You do need a slicer. The idea is that the file that you make, and this is the STA, uh, STL file that we just made. We're going to drop it in there. This file can be transferred between printers between everything it is really just data about the geometry of the print and a program like cura which is a slicer will slice this up and tell each printer exactly what to do with this type of file so you can transfer files between people and it is not specific to the size of the print that you want it to be not specific to the printer it's just a geometry file so that's why you need a program like Cura to actually slice this and change it around. So uh, you can see that if it's too large of a build, it's not going to fit inside my print area. So we're going to just kind of shrink this down. There we go. And I think that 80% is probably a, a good size. Oh, nope, nope. Too big. 70%. That should work here. Let's just go ahead and center this on there. We go. Perfect. Okay. Maybe it would 80 would have worked if it would have been centered. There you go. Perfect. Okay. So this is about as large as I can make it for my print area. You can see with this, this slicer that I'm using, it shows me sort of those red areas of the overhang that I was talking about before. And once I am happy with this, I could also view this in a few different ways, like different ways, like this cool layer mode. So you can actually see exactly how it is going to print every single layer. And I can cut through and see that there's uh, there's no holes. There's nothing in the middle of there that's going to uh, screw anything up. Right now, it's printing that X, that pattern right there because I have infill density set at 20%. If I was to put that at 0%, it would re-slice everything and it would be completely hollow. I don't want that. I do want some type of support. So let's go ahead and add, maybe we'll just only do a 10% support there. It's going to re-slice and there it goes. So it is, I'm going to keep it back to 20%. Um, so that is how a slicer works. Uh, it's basically telling the printer exactly what to do. Oh, head this way, head this way, create this line, create that line, that sort of thing. And once we are happy with it, then we can click save to file or save to external uh, drive and actually get this on the printer itself. My printer happens to have a web interface so that I can send my prints to it. So I'm going to use this as the way that I get the file onto the printer. All I have to do is drop the file onto here. It will upload and then start its print. This is my 3D printer right here, the Monoprice Mini Select Delta. And let's go ahead and click start print. I decided to do an awesome time lapse of the 3D print. You can see that it's building the base. And then I remember to put in a clock. 
I started this about 11.20 and ended up taking about three hours to complete this print. Right now it's working on the base and right about here now is when it started on those layers with those overhangs. And you can see that there is a little bit of plastic that fell down off of the side. A little bit more on that later. Still building the house and it finishes about 209, something like that. This is what the finished product looks like off of the build plate. You can see what I meant about the overhangs kind of screwing up a little bit. You can see the that the printer doesn't have any way to support underneath the house there. So a few of those strands just fall down there. But all in all, it is pretty adorable. I could I might be able to fix some of that uh, by adding supports in the print settings. Uh, or something like that. Also, you can kind of see there's a little bit of gaps right there in between the different layers. Maybe with screwing around with some settings, I could fix that too. But for a quick print job, the house, that's the back of the house, this is supposed to be the front of the house. This looks uh, pretty good for a little quick print. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like. Please let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. And please subscribe for future tips, tricks, tutorials, and spotlights here on OMG Craft. See you next time. Bye.